Hey everyone, Jamal here with Creator. Amazing guest today, the awesome and talented Ryan West, based in LA. He's a celebrity fashion and beauty photographer. Hey, what's up? How's it going, everyone? So happy to be here. Thank you, Jamal, for having me. Cool. And today we're just going to kind of talk about all things photography, how he got started, which is a very unique story that we'll get into. Um, but before we do that, I'd like to have Ryan just quickly give some background about your journey to becoming a photographer, and then we'll get into more questions from the audience, et cetera. Sure. I always like to say that I'm kind of in my, my third life uh, in my career. So basically I started out, I uh, graduated with a business degree, worked in finance for about 10 years. At the same time I was doing music. I was, uh, to get myself to university, I was doing a radio show and as well with DJ and nightclubs. Um, crazy times, I'm just exhausted even just like saying that out because I, I can't picture myself doing that right now. Um, and then through there, I transitioned into uh, photography, which had always been kind of a, a interest of mine, even when I was a kid and had a film camera. And so let's kind of go back to the, the world of, of music. And then also, I guess the finance piece too. So there are a lot of photographers or creatives that I know who did work in where mm -hmm. they were engineering or something they didn't like. What was kind of like, were you like, you know what, I just need to leave that and try to give this creative thing a go? Uh, well, like any good story, it involves a girl. And uh, basically, <laughs> I was, uh, you know, I'd been in finance for about 10 years um, and I enjoyed it. I was working in the strategic part of things. And then our company had merged and become quite a big company. And uh, I went from strategy into risk analysis. And honestly, it was just like watching uh, paint yeah, dry. Yeah, that's boring stuff. And so at the same yeah, time, yeah, at the same time, I went through like a bad breakup. And I remember it was right before summer and I thought, okay, you know what, this summer, no girls. I just want to focus on myself. And two things I had always wanted, uh, one was a mountain bike because mine got stolen in junior high school. And then the second one was a proper uh, SLR camera. And uh, like I said, as a kid, I had had a film camera, but I'd always wanted like a proper one. And so I got the bike. First thing I did was took it up to the trails, took a jump, forgot about the uh, laws of gravity. Instead of leaning uh, forward on the jump, I leaned back, immediately crashed, sprained <laughs> my arm. Uh, so that was a no-go. And then second, I got the camera and it just, it was, you know, it was probably a unhealthy deep dive. I just uh, picked up the camera. I started buying lens, uh, lenses. And I uh, started looking at photography of things that I liked. And I was like, what is it that I like? I'm like, it's the lighting. So then I was like, okay, let me get like a speed light. And I'm like, oh, you know what? It looks better off camera. Okay, let, let, me, let me make it wireless. Then let me get another speed light. You know what? Let me get some strobes. And it just was like within probably a couple of months, I had basically had my whole kit of uh, camera gear. And even some friends of mine that were professionals were like, damn, like, you know, you've just dropped all this money. You're going into it pretty deep. And it, but it just, it just felt right, you know? And I just, uh, it took off from there. Pretty much all of your training was just really self-taught and just really being obsessed and just going down the rabbit hole and just shooting as much as you can and tinkering, correct? It was an unhealthy obsession, but they, you know, I think that's, that's always the great start to, uh, if you really are passionate about something. Um, and yeah, I always like to say, you know, I just read the manual, literally like, Chapter one, you know, what's this? What's aperture? What's uh, the shutter speed? What's it do? Because really, you know, photography is a lot of creative problem solving. It's what's that vision that you have and then how, how best to do it. Obviously, there are a lot of stuff to shoot. How did you key in on wanting to do kind of fashion and portraiture and mm -hmm. then celebrity and kind of all that stuff? So that's a good question. That's actually one I do get a lot of when people hit me up on Instagram or, or whatever, or interns. And um, I always say, you know, just try everything. If, if, you don't, if you don't have an idea, it's best just to try everything. So when I first got the camera, I was like, okay, cool. Let me take some portraits or let me be a second shooter on a wedding or let me shoot my friend's event. And I just tried everything. And it was all fun. But for me, just personally, I really liked make like instead of taking a picture and documenting, it was more about making that picture. So for me, that lent itself to fashion photography and portraiture. As far as how you started to learn that nuance and craft, because obviously photography, there's a lot of 
uh, fashion photography, there's a lot of varying things to it, right? There's the clothes and there's the makeup. And then as, as opposed to say shooting events or something, it's now become a team dynamic. So how did you kind right, of right. learn how to na uh, navigate the world of kind of fashion photography, so to speak, as far as adapting and learning? Adapting, well, that's a good that's question. A good question. I, mean, I mean, it's, uh, uh, it's definitely uh, teamwork, like you said. Uh, that's something that would I would say go back to my um, uh, my business degree in those classes. You had to have a team. Yeah, you you always there was always a, a group project per se. So that's how it kind of like relates back to to the fashion photography and working with a team. And and basically, you've nailed it on the head as far as you know how important that is because that is kind of the last dynamic I feel in photography because you can learn the lighting, you can learn the technical stuff, um, but it's really the psychology. How do you get that team together? How do you deal with multiple personalities, multiple ego types? How do you get what you want out of the talent? Uh, you know, I'll even give you an example. I was, uh, I was shooting a, a, a subject for Emmy magazine and he was a writer, super nice guy, but just very writer, you know, one look, very monotone. And I wanted to get some different looks and some different emotions out of him. And so of course we're just chatting, we're talking a little bit about his show that he's writing on. Um, and it just, it just wasn't cracking through. And then eventually I was like, hey, I'm like, are you married? He's like, yeah, are my kids? He's like, yeah, actually I got two great kids and just boom, you could see his energy light up. And I was like, there we go. So that's the, you know, that's the, the, the avenue I went down, started talking about his kids and that whole journey and fatherhood. And he just kind of lit up, got different emotions, different looks, and then the shoot uh, turned out great. The photo editor loved it. Um, so that again, yeah, the psychology of the, the shoots is, is extremely important something that I think is a lot hard for people, which is the style component. How did you land on the particular style that you have now? And what I'm actually going to do is bring up, I think it's interesting. I, I didn't even realize that that was your shoot, but I actually picked it out. But you have a shoot on your website for um, that was featured on paper cut. I actually remember picking that out. Oh, yeah, no, I, yeah. so I'll bring that up and then we'll go through cool. your um, website. But I guess talk about how you landed on your style and what you consider it to be currently. Uh, well, how I landed on my style was one, I, I kind of, when I first got into photography, I would just kind of look and I would slowly build up a, a reference catalog of images that I liked. And then I would just look at it and see kind of what's the commonality between them. Um, so whether it's kind of moody or whether it's bright, basically there's three things I always try to aim for as to make it beautiful, have some emotion and have a bit of elegance to it. So that's my particular brand. That's my girl that I like to shoot. Um, but yeah, and you'll kind of see that throughout there. It's very kind of, uh, you know, it's stylized, very beautiful, elegant. Um, hopefully it captures some emotion in it. Um, so yeah, and that's, that's just from kind of seeing what's out there and, and taking a look to see what I like. And that's just happens to resonate with my eye. Cool, yeah, so I'm just gonna kind of scroll through and if there's any particular images that kind of pop up, um, yeah, you might have a comment on or anything like that or any sections we'll just do that for maybe five minutes i just want to give people a sense of your visual style so they can so we can know what you're referencing sure yeah so basically this is just a regular kind of portraiture uh which i, I tend to shoot a lot of um you know actors and celebrities and stuff so it's very kind of clean very elegant um it's stuff that you know plays as well in magazines um, and it's always interesting, right? Because you're working with uh, other artists, actors, uh, musicians, or what have you. So it's um, it can be interesting, you know. And I, I enjoy it because you're always meeting interesting people, people that are doing things, people of interest, as I like to say. So that's that page. Um, what else is there? There's the fashion page. I mean, basically, it, there is kind of a common theme throughout it. Like I said, kind of the aesthetic of, of what I shoot. Exactly, yeah. And I think that's important in today's market because you can't be everything to everyone because why would anyone hire you? You kind of have to have um, you know, a vision of, of who you are and what you photograph and it should be cohesive so that when someone hires you that they know what they're getting. How about that? How did you first land that kind of gig that showed that you think you're a professional and maybe to the outside world and clients, they also considered you to be a professional. What was that gig or groups of gigs or year or I um, guess? Upwards? You know, I, I, to be honest with you, so my background uh, after finance was in music. And as I was learning photography, I would post stuff up on Facebook or, you know, wherever. And it was actually through my music contacts 
um, you know, they, they were like, hey, can you shoot this? Can you shoot that? And one of my very first assignments was for a local magazine in Vancouver, uh, Canada, which is where I'm originally from. And it was to shoot the band Foster the People. And it was that summer that they had a, their huge breakout hit, uh, Pumped Up Kicks. And so I went down, photographed them. And of course, we started chatting about music and, uh, you know, music production. So that's how I kind of broke the ice with them, got some great photos. Uh, those got published. And then from there, it just kind of snowballed. And at that point, I wasn't, I didn't, I don't even think I had a photography website, wasn't even calling myself a photographer. I was just kind of posting up stuff. Um, and so from there, it kind of snowballed, led to the next assignment, to the next assignment, until finally I was like, wow, you know what? Uh, you know, I guess I am a photographer. Maybe I should make a site. Maybe I, this is, you know, this is the road I should travel down. And, uh, you know, it was since that shoot, I haven't looked back since. Cool. So let's, I guess, talk about how you started to, once you were like, I'm a photographer, how did you start to get your name out there? Who are you networking with besides the music component, which I think is useful to, that you had yeah. some type of entertainment in there. For sure. Um, I mean, after that, really, it's again, it goes down to, you know, who are the type of people that need to buy your art? So it's, you know, what is it that you want to shoot? What's your aesthetic? Um, and then who would be the type of people that want to buy that art or that would want to hire you? So for me, Again, it's, you know, fashion and the celebrity portraiture or editorial um, work for magazines. And so from there, I basically looked up different magazines, looked up to see who the photo editors were, started emailing them, trying to connect with them. Um, I remember after Vancouver, I moved to New York. I was assisting uh, Alexi Lubomirsky, one of the top photographers in the world. Very, very nice guy. Um, so that opened up a few doors and I just got to see different things. Um, and network with some really great creatives in New York um, as well, just for the celebrity portion, just reaching out to publicists um, and connecting with them. And I mean, this all takes time. And of course, even to reach out to certain people, you want to have your work at a certain level. You just don't want to just be starting and then start to reach out to these people because, you know, you really, you get, you know, one chance to make an impression. So I would, you know, just build up your work, get it to a point where you're confident and happy in it and where it can compete with what you're currently seeing in magazines and different things. And then from there, you can start reaching out to the people that you want to work with, whether it's magazine editors, uh, photo editors, publicists, uh, fashion labels, art directors, art buyers. So let's rewind and talk about the assisting portion. A number of people assist, some people don't. Talk about your experience assisting. And I, obviously, as someone who was probably started a little bit older, so to speak, as far yeah. as like you weren't coming out of college with this, Right. What was your reasoning for wanting to assist and what did you get out of it? So basically in Vancouver, I'd already kind of honed my craft. You know, I was already shooting, uh, you know, some celebrities and already shooting a couple brands and I had, you know, a portfolio. And basically it was when I went to New York and uh, a good friend of mine, Emily, who was Alexi's studio manager at the time, she was my first meeting and, uh, you know, bless her soul. She was like, hey, uh, you know, you're already doing excellent work. You're like, obviously, you're great at lighting. Um, you know, if you want, you could come and kind of intern and assist here. It's kind of below where you're at right now, but hey, we'd love to have you. And for me, I just looked at it as, you know, just a great opportunity. Like, I had to, you know, just put leave your ego at the door. And, you know, even though I was already shooting, I was like, wow, this is a great environment and a great opportunity and, you know, great people to work with. And so, it just opened up my eyes to how um, things work at that particular level. And um, yeah, it was just a great experience. So I feel that if you can, you don't want to assist anyone and everyone, but if there's someone that is in your genre of what you want to do, someone that you look up to and you can get in there and assist uh, for you know a little while, I, I wouldn't say years and years, but if you can get in there for a little while just to kind of learn and absorb and, um, and just to see what it's really like, then I, I do think that's, that's really valuable whether you know you're just starting out or whether you've had some experience like i did obviously you're now actually in los angeles but you mentioned moving to new york i right. guess talk about the differences between the two and what made you want to move to la versus staying in new york talk about that kind of sure. well uh like my friend emily who i just mentioned uh she said when i moved out you know uh you know, California is very Hollywood and it, and, it, and it certainly is. But um, to answer your question, basically I was in New York and I was ready to move there. It was actually another friend of mine. Uh, he's a Canadian rapper named uh, Dilemma and uh, one of my best friends. I'd been his tour DJ for a couple of years and he was the one that was saying, hey, 
I'm moving, I, you know, I want to go check out LA for a couple months. I'm thinking about moving there. Why don't you come with? I said, sure. There's no way I'm moving to LA, but uh, I'll come with and support. And then we came out for a couple months. He ended up not liking it. He went back to Toronto. Uh, and then here, as opposed to assisting, I was actually getting hired as the photographer. Landed a really good jeans client uh, to close flight back home to Vancouver. And of course, you know, can't beat the weather. It's uh, October right now, and it's basically like a nice summer day. So just decided to stay. Cool. And then, so what are the big key differences you feel between the markets? Obviously, of course, there's some differences. New York is mm -hmm. a, what traditionally would be, I guess, considered a bigger market in terms of the advertising clients. And there's a mm -hmm. more larger breadth of stuff, whereas LA, it's sunny, so there's a lot of swimsuits, celebrities, like you mentioned. But besides those things, what are some of the key differences between those two markets? I would say New York is definitely fashion. That's where all, where all the brand, all the head offices are uh, in America would be in New York. A lot of the magazine offices are there. Um, and New York just has a very certain, you know, New York vibe to it. Whereas LA, of course, it's going to be much more entertainment. So where all the studios are, uh, it's a lot more celebrity driven. Um, so that's why, you know, even when I did move from New York to LA, I started noticing that my book was getting a little bit celebrity actor heavy. And I try and rebalance it again with, um, you know, fashion work with models um, just to kind of keep it, you know, consistent because I don't want to dive too deep down into one world. Um, for me, I, I like, I enjoy both and uh, I want to do both. Plus for the fashion side, I can test out ideas. Um, you know, there's a little more flexibility so I can test out different lighting or different concepts. And then from there I can transfer that back over to the celebrity side if I've tested it already. Jump into the celebrity things. I've heard from a number of people, a lot of them based in LA, who do shoot celebrities, entertainers. Um, people think it's like this super glamorous thing, but actually sometimes you only have like four minutes to shoot somebody. Talk about what it's really like to shoot some of these uh, celebrities, if there's any specific examples that you want to show. Yeah, or show, for I sure. Say. I haven't, I mean, I've heard that too. And I luckily, knock on wood, I haven't had those situations um, out here in LA where I've only had four minutes. For me, it's usually a setup production. Uh, coordinated with the magazine publicist the talent um but i did what my very very first one was back in vancouver there was an artist uh i think her name was fifi dobson she's a canadian pop star and literally i had 60 seconds the manager came in he's like okay yeah before she goes on you got 60 seconds uh, take your shots and so again this comes back to the psychology of things so i had everything already pre-lit ready to go and one thing i like to do uh, I wasn't even tethered back then. I think I was just shooting uh, straight to camera because it was a very tight space. Um, so I took the shot. I knew it would look good. I was using a ring flash. Um, I thought she might not have seen that. So I took a couple pictures and I was like, oh, wow, these look great. And you know, I turned the camera to her so she could see. And she's like, oh, these look really cool. That's a cool look. And I was like, great, let's, let's shoot some more. And, and, I, and so because she had kind of bought into it and I showed her, then that, um, Kind of raises her confidence and it gets more buy-in. Then the manager was like, "Hey, uh, you know, we got we, we got to go." And she's like, "No, oh, just a couple more minutes." And I was like, "Great." So it's a psychology of just getting that buy-in that buy-in early uh, to afford you more time. But luckily, since then, I haven't had any sixty-second shoots. Uh, they've all been uh, you know pretty planned and coordinated. Cool. So, what is that kind of I guess initial buy-in interaction that you do have with these kind of entertainers and kind of people with higher stature? What's kind of some of your go-to questions or just processes that you kind of try to use to get them to settle in and trust you to capture their essence? Well, uh, actually, Alexi gave me a pretty good piece of advice. And that's when, uh, you know, they're first kind of coming in and they're settling down to get the hair and makeup done. It's just to kind of chat them up, maybe, you know, crack a couple jokes and just kind of see how they respond to you. Um, you know, do they want to just be treated kind of with the white glove service or do they want to just be treated, you know, as normal people? And um, yeah, so I kind of, I kind of just kind of come in, chat a little bit, and kind of just sense the vibe of how they want to be treated. And luckily, so far, everyone has been, you know, really cool. Most people are friendly. They like to joke around. And for me personally, I like my shoots to kind of be like that. To be, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's not that it's serious work, but I mean, they're, you know, we're here to do something and accomplish something and get great photographs. But at the same time, I kind of like to have a very kind of laid back environment. Uh, you know, good food, good music, laid back, good energy. And I just want people to feel comfortable so that, uh, you know, we can accomplish what, what we need to do. Cool. So let's jump back to um, kind of the promotional aspect. Obviously, with iPhones out, everyone thinks they're a photographer. I think this is a good joke. If you buy a piano, 
you're just a guy with a piano, but if you buy a photographer, all of a sudden, a uh, uh, camera, you're a photographer. Mm -hmm. I haven't um, heard that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, so how have you been able to make yourself stand out with how you market, how you brand, and then social media? I know you have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, et cetera. Talk about just kind of yeah. some of those things that you've used. Um, well, you know, it's an interesting question. I mean, right now I feel the market is flooded. There is a lot of photographers. Um, you know, it's not so much the iPhone photographers, like that is, would be my competition because it's not what I do, but uh, just hobbyists with the camera. And, um, you know, fair enough to each their own. Um, but I would say to stand out then when the market is flooded is you have to figure out what kind of service it is that you offer. You know, are you the uh, discount, high volume Walmart photographer? Uh, you know, like shooting headshots and just kind of churning it out? Or are you going to be the high-end white glove uh, service sort of photographer? Um, you know, so kind of figuring that out. And then from there, like for me, obviously, I'm on the kind of more white glove service side, high-end portraiture. And so just kind of uh, making sure everything is on brand for that, from my website, from the logo, um, just to interactions, to how I handle my sets. Everything should be very smooth, coordinated, and professional. Uh, but yeah, it's still fun, of course. Um, and so then that kind of translates into all the other things. So uh, my Facebook, I keep more personal, just in case people want to see kind of my personality, see what I'm up to. Uh, my Instagram is definitely more showcasing kind of behind the scenes, some finished work, uh, and just, you know, kind of interesting places I've been. Um, and it all kind of ties together. Everything points to each other. It's always easy to find my contact information. And... Uh, yeah, it's just one of those things you, you kind of have to do, you know, like I did have a, you know, I, um, I had a social media person kind of look at my stuff and, you know, they said it looks good. It's very, it has an aesthetic to it, but you got to post more. So I, I still struggle with that right now, you know, like I probably should have posted, you know, uh, this week and I haven't, but I did post about today's, uh, uh, today's podcast. So that's, you know, hopefully that helps. <laughs> cool. And also, so you, of course, in addition to promoting stuff, you also have an agent. Talk about what that's like to work with an agent, how you landed the agent, and just overall what um, you get out of having an agent versus going it alone. Sure, so um, I've had a syndication agent, which is someone that works your existing work uh, for a number of years. Uh, and now I have a photo agent, Alyssa, over at MCH. And um, you know she's great, it's, it's a new relationship. I just signed on over there. And um, you know, it had taken me a little while to get to the point where I could even, you know, get an agent. Like back in New York, I was more assisting. My book wasn't quite there. I did get some meetings here and there. I have had a couple offers from different agents, but I just didn't feel they were the right fit. Uh, with my current agent, Alyssa, it was a good fit, great meeting. I think we're both on board with uh, the vision of where I want to go and how best to achieve that. Um, so it's good. It's just basically, you know, as I like to always say, it takes a team to make the dream. And it's true. So you got to surround yourself by the right people. So to have an agent that's got your back and is proactive is great. Uh, you know, my interns, assistants, everyone is kind of working um, in the same direction, and uh, we have we, we share a common vision. So it's definitely important to have that right team of people around you. And um, also, it'll be great too. I guess you mentioned where you're looking to kind of go and having the team on board. What are some of the things you're looking to move into? Um, obviously, a big thing on people's minds is motion and video. Is that something you're looking to get into? Has that been broached? Talk about just trends that you're seeing and where you're looking to take what you're doing. I mean, for me, I, I want to continue in what I'm doing. So working with, uh, you know, established magazines, you know, bigger talent, basically bigger magazines, bigger talent, and just growing in that direction. Um, you know, that's the ultimate goal. And then as well as part of uh, motion, I have been just kind of slowly uh, diving a little bit into it. I have nothing released yet. There's not enough work to uh, to put out there. But, you know, like little fashion films perhaps or um, just little little offerings that maybe we could do for clients kind of, uh, you know, from a fashion perspective. So definitely something that I think is worthwhile to to look at and something that I'm learning a little bit more about. Um, we have the capability. So it's... Uh, and, and being a photographer, it gives you that eye. So um, yeah, definitely looking to get more involved with motion. It would be great to talk about why you like photography, why you're so passionate about it. You know, so I guess end off with just why you like photography and, and why is it so special to you? 
Man, that's, uh, I mean, that's always something just, I think that comes from within. I mean, for me, I just, I, even as like a, even as a little kid, I remember one time being at the library with uh, my mom and just like seeing some fashion magazines. And this is like, it's probably in grade four or something and just flipping through them and just kind of being enamored with like the, the, the photography or the images. And, um, you know, even at our house, you know, we had like a, like my parents' uh, library. Um, I remember just being like a really young kid and looking through, they had the Salvador Dali book. And I remember I was kind of peeking through it and, you know, they're like, oh, you're too young to look at that. And I remember, you know, when they would leave or whatever, I would kind of flip through it and see, and just, I don't know, just, there's just something about images that is kind of like an instant connection. And it's just uh, something I find interesting. And I'm always striving to make something that's, that's kind of, um, you know, gonna make you stop and, and look at that. So for me, it's just, uh, yeah, it's just something that, that I resonate with and connect with. Cool. Well, this has been super awesome. Everybody definitely check out more of Ryan's work on his Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, which you can find on his website, which is ryanwestphoto.com. We'll definitely have to have him back on to dive into more projects and things like that. Um, but Ryan, thanks again for joining us today. This has been oh, awesome. Thank you so much for having me, Jamal. I appreciate everyone at Creator. Thank you so much. We'll talk soon. Take it easy.